O God, be gracious to me, a sinner, and have mercy on me. Blessed is our God, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For heavenly peace and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for peace in the whole world and stability of the holy churches of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and our Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord, for all glory, honor, and worship are you do, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Father Anthony has led this parish for almost five years and has transformed it with his unwavering faith, creative outreach, and boundless energy. Please welcome our parish priest, Father Anthony. <laughs> After watching this beautiful video, I don't know if I can speak, but I'll try. Our beloved spiritual father, your eminence, Metropolitan Methodist of Boston, Honorable Consul General Simeon Tegos and family, Honorable Mayor Katiana Ballantyne and family, Diane Karavitis, the President of our Parish Council, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, families and friends, those who are here with us and those who are absent for a good cause, thank you. Those who were here seven years ago but are asleep in the Lord today and did not see what we see, may their memories be eternal. Their prayers were answered. There is a gentleman sitting here with us today who told me the first time we met, Father Anthony, as our new priest, I would like to inform you that we are in the middle of a renovation planning and we would like to achieve this milestone with your help and blessing. Bill Galatis is one of our very generous donors. And he received the naming rights of this beautiful hall that we are enjoying today. But he preferred to name it after a World War I hero, George Dilboy. in whose memory he created a beautiful wall right outside by the entrance. Four years ago, after celebrating a feast of the mission of the Virgin Mary, a gentleman approached me in the lower hall, pointing to the mock-up of the building renderings on the wall and said, Father, it is going to be beautiful. He passed away a week later. Another gentleman asked me, as I was sitting by his deathbed about two years ago, Pater, have you started the renovation yet? I said, yes, sir. He looked into my eyes an hour before he would close his own to eternal life and said, with the prophetic words of the Divine Liturgy, it is about time. Today we remember those two faithful servants because this beautiful building is named after Mr. Christos Karavitis. <laughs> and the mosaic icon of the Theotokos on our bell tower is dedicated to the memory of Athanasios Genghis. We all knew him as Arthur. There are dozens of examples like this, and I will be sharing those stories
for years to come so that you can share with your families and your future generations. If it were up to me, I would end my speech here with a big thank you because we gather solely to thank God and one another for the transformation that has happened in front of our eyes. So thank you for believing that this moment was possible and investing your time, talent, and treasures to make it happen. This is a moment in the life of this community that many generations will look back on and speak about with awe. They may think we were giants and magicians, but we are just humans who were able to work together towards the same goal against all odds for seven years. Like any journey, this one was not easy. Just look at my picture in the tribute book from before and look at me now. My wife said that this is not her fault. <laughs> Every journey includes an element of unknown. And like Moses, often people who start the journey do not enter the promised land. But the journey is usually not about only the destination, but it also is about the process. The journey is not about the leaders, and it is about the people. Today, dear brothers and sisters, as we cut that ribbon, we celebrate our arrival at the Jordan River. And we mark two things as we complete this journey and look towards the next one. The first is simple and obvious. This renovation has transformed every aspect of these buildings thanks to the vision and sacrifices made by each and every one of us and thank God for his daily blessings through the process. The second, however, is what, is what I would like to focus on. Today we enter a new era in the life of our community. The journey of physical transformation has ended, and now the spiritual journey of transforming our lives becomes our sole focus. The renovation of the temple in which we worship is completed, but the renovation of our life in Christ as members of the temple of his glorious body will continue. Four years ago from this same podium, I inspired you to enter the desert of the unknown by starting this massive renovation that seemed bigger than any one of us could handle on our own. At that time, I shared an ancient wisdom from the fourth century that said, blessed are those who build churches. Today we have entered into a blessedness of our founding fathers by totally transforming what they passed down to us. Over 100 years ago, a group of poor immigrants invested everything they had in establishing this community because they believed that we would be faithful and trustworthy heirs of their sacrificial investment. As it was for them all those years ago, for us the journey is also just beginning. Or I should say, we are continuing the journey that started more than a century ago. Indeed, we are continuing the journey that the disciples of our Lord started 2,000 years ago. Four years ago, we crossed the Red Sea. And during these past four years, we went through the dusty desert of renovation. We kept our flag up during the unknown of COVID. We sat in church without heat and worshiped God on freezing winter Sundays. We sweated through the summer without AC. Our children attended Greek and Sunday schools in spite of the dust and building materials and without central heat. Many were the perils and obstacles as we started marching through our construction from that blessed night when you and I hesitantly voted that we can do this. Those who doubted were right. Those who did not doubt, they were right too. Because at the end, it was not what we thought individually that brought us to this promised day, 
but it was our unified spirit during the journey that guaranteed our successful arrival in front of the ribbon that we just cut. We suffered many things as we journeyed towards it, but God never abandoned us even in the midst of fire. I remember approaching the holy body and blood of our Lord on Holy Saturday when tears were flowing from my eyes like rivers. I remember sitting outside by that monument in my shorts and t-shirt and crying when this parking lot was swarmed by fire trucks. But now everything we have suffered to come to this day is only an inspirational past and the eternity is ahead of us. In those past four years, we were renovating these buildings, but eternity is for building the temple of the body of our Lord and Savior. When people were pointing out how magnificent the temple of Jerusalem was, Christ said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up again. This temple took 46 years to build, the Jews replied. And you are going to raise it up in three days? I have to inspire you today, my dear brothers and sisters, by saying that when I said four years ago that blessed are those who build churches, I was not talking about this physical building only, as our Lord was not talking about the temple of Jerusalem. Jesus was talking about the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said. As we celebrate the fulfilled promise of our Lord, as we rejoice in the miracle he has performed for us, let us engage in work we are called to do as his disciples, who then believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken and went out and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Thank you. Father, thank you very much. Father, can I ask you to come back up here again, please? We have a gift for you, Father. Diane? On behalf of the parish and the parish council, this is a small gift for a token of our appreciation that you have endured all this time for this project. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't know about it. Thank you. Thank you. We also have a small gift for Presbytera Kelly. On behalf of the parish, we would like to say that we will be planting a tree in your honor when we do our landscaping in the spring. We know how much you love the environment, so I'm sure you appreciate that small token of our appreciation. Thank you, Presbytera. Uh, before I ask His Eminence to come up and uh, make his remarks and uh, close the night, Father Anthony, you poured yourself into the parish since the day you arrived here. You're a caring pastor who has created remarkable ways to spread our Orthodox Christian faith and sustain our Hellenic culture. You teach something new every single day about how to live a more Christian-centered life. Your kindness makes this parish better today than yesterday. Thank you for your undeniable faith and inspiring leadership, and we know there's more to come. This next video is for you because you are you.
Please welcome to the podium His Eminence uh, Metropolitan Methodius of Boston. Κύριε Πρόεδρε της Κοινότητας, Κύριε Πρόεδρε της Συλλοκτώχου, αγαπητοί μου όλοι σας, όντως είναι ιστορική μέρα η σημερινή. Όχι διότι πέρασαν εκατόν τόσα χρόνια από την ημέρα που ιδρύθηκε η κοινότητα αυτή, αλλά διότι όλοι σας μεταλαμπαδεύετε σήμερα και στο μέλλον την Ορθοδοξία την Ελληνική στις ερχόμενες γενναίες. Χάρηκα πάρα πολύ που είδα τόσα παιδιά στις φωτογραφίες που δείξαν ιδιαίτερος με τον πατέρα Αντώνιο. Billy, he did it again. <laughs> When father asked me to come to see the construction and the renovation, I told him I'm going to come towards the end when you're almost finished. And when I came, I said, this is a miracle. And I said that to all of the priests in the metropolis, I feel part of this community because you owe me. <laughs> I could have sent Father to any one of 60 communities. I chose yours. Diane, congratulations to you. You're the product of somebody, and this is the miracle of this parish and all of our parishes. Christos Karavitis was not a Rhodes Scholar, nor was he a multimillionaire. He was a hard-working man who believed in the American dream and believed in the faith that his parents and grandparents handed down to him. 
And Cristo is just one of many in this community that did the same thing. That's why you have what you have. By the way, this hall is beautiful. I've been here 38 years. And I would come here, and I've got to tell you, I wasn't very happy coming to the, to the hall because it wasn't a very nice looking hall. <laughs> but today, it is just gorgeous. And that's something that you should be very proud of. I said I was part of this community because when I was a seminarian back in the 1960s, I was assigned to come to this community to help Father George Sumas. How many of you remember Father George Sumas? Yeah. Father George was a unique individual. He was a wonderful man. Apophitos Tiscalgis, Opios, Itenen Espanios Clidicos, Tonopion Agapusa, Kesevomuna Parapoli. When he was the parish priest here, I would come on Sundays and the major feast days and help him in the altar. God rest his soul, and God rest the soul of all of the priests that served this community. Every one of them gave of their talents so that this parish turn out to be what it is, one of the finest communities in the metropolis. Έχει κρατήσει την ελληνικότητά τη και τα παιδάκια αυτά που είδατε στην είσοδο που πήκαμε, όπω και η κορούλα σα, είναι το μέλλον τη Ορθοδοξία σε αυτή τη χώρα. Και είναι σε καλά χέρια, νομίζω. I want to ask you to remember the gospel text of the Samaritan woman. And this is what this parish has to be in the future. What do I mean? The Samaritan woman went to Jacob's well and sat with Jesus Christ, dialogued with him, and was filled with his love and his faith. That's what this community should be, a Jacob's well that opens its arms to everyone. Don't forget the Samaritan woman was not Jewish, and Christ really didn't have to speak to her. But he did. And that's what you have to do. You have to open up your embrace, of course, to our Greek people, but also to our American friends who seek to quench their thirst at Jacob's well. So the next hundred years will be years of joy, years of commitment from all of you so that you continue building not so much community centers like this or the beautiful church that you built, the beautiful renovations you made in the church, but you build character and love in the hearts and minds of those people that you embrace in this parish. God bless you all. Father Anthony, thank you again for your ministry. Give him a round of applause, he deserves it. <laughs>